Mali's harsh declaration regarding UN peacekeeping troops focused on their perceived failure to combat terrorism within the country, branding them ineffective and, to a surprising extent, potentially complicit in the terror's perpetuation. The assertion went even further, implying that these troops purposefully allowed terrorism to persist in order to justify their continued presence, ostensibly protecting Western interests. As a result, Mali's military leadership demanded the expulsion of UN security forces in order to overhaul the security strategy. The UN, however, did not immediately comply, instead deliberating on the directive within the framework of the UN Security Council. The military junta of Mali's bold decision to order the withdrawal of UN security forces reflects a significant shift in the country's stance toward international intervention in its security affairs. Mali's leadership signaled a desire for a revised security approach by confronting the perceived ineffectiveness and potential ulterior motives of the UN peacekeeping mission while raising critical questions about the motives and actions of international forces operating within its borders. The UN's refusal to comply with the expulsion order quickly adds to the complication of the situation, setting the stage for additional diplomatic and geopolitical discussions within the UN Security Council. Colonel Goida, Mali's president, grew increasingly frustrated by the idea of other countries dictating the presence of UN troops within Mali's borders. As a result, he used his authority to forcefully remove UN troops from the country. Colonel Goida's decision to assert control over Mali's security situation without external intervention culminated in their hasty departure. TR Media investigates new frontiers and transformative initiatives. Whether you're a first-time viewer or looking for new perspectives on the ever-changing landscape of innovation and global impact, our content delves into the most recent breakthroughs and the global transformative effects they have. The origins of this crisis can be traced back to Mali's conflict in 2012, when an insurgency erupted in the Oswad region, triggering international intervention. The UN peacekeeping mission, MEMI and USMA, began in 2013 with the goal of stabilizing Mali post-insurgency. However, the mission failed to deter terrorism and was moored by controversy after more than a decade. Mali's ruling junta launched an investigation, accusing human peacekeepers of espionage and ineffectiveness, and demanding that the 15,000-strong peacekeeping force be withdrawn. This move was widely supported by Malian citizens, as evidenced by large-scale protests in Bamako, echoing the sentiment that the UN mission had failed to deliver peace. Protesters at the Palais de Sports Arena demanded that Minesmo leave Mali, expressing their dissatisfaction with its ineffectiveness. Minusma, which was established in 2013 to counter armed group attacks linked to ISIS and Al-Qaeda, has become the UN's largest, most expensive, and deadliest operation, despite its substantial troop presence. Malians blamed the mission for failing to protect the population and intervene in massacres near UN compounds. Tensions rose as a result of the government's collaboration with the Wagner Group, prompting demonstrators to call for Minusma's resignation, wave Russian flags, and express their displeasure. Following a 2020 military coup and accusations of human rights violations involving Russian mercenaries, this rally revealed strained relations between Mali, Europe, and the UN mission. According to reports, Malian authorities are pursuing espionage charges against those linked to a UN report alleging civilian deaths at the hands of the Malian army and the Wagner Group. Mali's military rulers restricted peacekeepers and terminated their alliance with France, highlighting the escalating tensions and challenges faced by the UN's peacekeeping operations in Mali. Foreign Minister Diop urged Minusma's withdrawal as soon as possible, rejecting UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres' proposed changes to the mission's mandate. Guterres had presented several options for changing the mission, arguing for a compromise solution to reconfigure the operation. Diop emphasized how Minusma's presence had heightened community tensions, particularly in the aftermath of a critical UN human rights report on an operation in Mora. The decision to end the decade-long peacekeeping mission coincided with Mali's preparations for elections and a constitutional amendment referendum.
Despite concerns about potential instability in Mali, the UN Security Council unanimously voted to end the operation by December 31, 2023. However, Mali's junta, led by Colonel Goichta, sought the immediate withdrawal of UN troops. As efforts were made to address logistical challenges, Diop emphasized the importance of finishing Minusma's work by the deadline. Colonel Goshta asserted his authority, dispatching soldiers to ensure the prompt and safe departure of UN troops, just as he had previously expelled UN officials who interfered in Mali's internal affairs. Colonel Goita's influence was evident as UN troops vacated the strategic town of Keitel in northern Mali. Despite initial plans for the peacekeeping force to leave by the end of the year, the evacuation of UN compounds began in July due to Goita's strict monitoring, rendering their stay ineffective. The controlled exit occurred as part of an effort to dispose of equipment that could not be transported under UN regulations. As part of the UN's gradual withdrawal plan, over 3,300 peacekeepers left Mali. The UN mission saw the repatriation of Senegalese peacekeepers, as well as the departure of nearly 3,276 uniformed personnel and 91 civilian staff under Goita's supervision. Security concerns and increased extremist attacks prompted the UN to leave camps in northern Mali quickly. As the UN dismantled bases across Mali, German troops began their withdrawal from Gao. By the end of November, the majority of Minusma's bases had been decommissioned, signaling the symbolic end of a 10-year deployment in Mali. The lowering of the UN flag at its headquarters in Bamako represented the failure to fulfill a 2013 commitment to stabilize the fragile state amid escalating violence. The Chunta's strategic reorientation, ending ties with France and turning towards Russia, rendered Minusma's presence untenable. In other words, the reason why the UN had no other option but to call its troops back is that Russian mercenaries were already present in Mali. They are ensuring security and doing in months what UN troops could not in a decade. Later, the United Nations peacekeeping mission in Mali declared the successful closure of its ninth base out of the 12 as part of its mandated withdrawal from the Chumta-led country, contending with separatist and jihadi uprisings. Hala Ahmed Yusuf, Minasma's bureau chief in the city of Gao, formally handed over the Ansongo camp in northern Mali to local authorities represented by Ahmed Ad Aklanin. You should know that the decision of Mali's military junta to expel UN troops is due to the shortcomings of the UN mission in effectively countering terrorism in the country. The junta has found out that UN troops intentionally prolonged the presence of terrorism in Mali, creating a pretext for their sustained presence to safeguard Western interests. Having assumed power in 2020, the Chunta assessed the performance of the UN peacekeeping mission, MINUSMA, in addressing Mali's ongoing security challenges. Despite a decade-long UN presence, the continued existence of terrorist activities linked to groups like Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State prompted the military Chunta to question the effectiveness of the UN strategies. It also opened doors to possibilities that until now, in over a decade, if the UN troops were not fighting terrorism effectively, what else were they doing? This creates quite a terrible situation and fears that they might have been involved in, helping terrorists and ensuring that every government in Mali follows the West's policies. Additionally, the Hunta's alignment with Russia and the involvement of the Wagner Group, a private military company associated with Russian interests, could indicate a strategic shift away from prior alliances, especially with France. Suspicions that UN troops deliberately failed to eradicate terrorism may be linked to the Hunta's aspiration to distance itself from Western influence and align more closely with powers like Russia. The Hunta's suspicion that the UN had motives to prolong the terrorism presence suggests the belief that such insecurity justifies the ongoing deployment of foreign troops. Maintaining a volatile security environment allows external actors, including Western nations, to legitimize their military presence in Mali under the guise of counterterrorism efforts. Moreover, the Janta's decision may reflect concerns about the broader geopolitical interests of Western nations, particularly former colonial power France, in the region. 
There could be a belief that the UN's failure to eliminate terrorism conveniently aligns with the interests of Western powers, enabling them to sustain a military presence for reasons beyond counterterrorism, such as resource extraction or regional influence. The Junta's suspicion signals a breakdown of trust between the Malian authorities and the UN mission. What's more, Russian mercenaries have taken the place of UN troops. They are swiftly progressing in addressing terrorism, achieving results within months that the UN mission struggled to attain in a decade. As of now, as UN troops have started leaving Mali, the Western countries are spreading fears about what will happen next. A stage is being set to create an environment where more foreign troops could be sent to Mali. However, it turns out that Mali would not need UN troops because it has decided to shift its focus to Russia and use its mercenaries. The excuse that the UN and foreign troops can help Mali fight terrorism no longer stays. Colonel Goyth of Mali has proved that he has the power to get the UN Security Council to call its troops back and force them to leave his country. He noticed that the UN mission stayed in Mali for a decade but failed. Yet the UN never felt it was unhelpful and that it should end, given that such a mission cost hundreds of billions of dollars. Why was the UN willing to spend such an amount on something that was supposed to benefit? This argument made things clear that billions of dollars were being spent on such a mission to safeguard Western interests. That's the reason you will never find any clear objectives of the UN missions deployed to African countries. These missions adjust their objectives depending on the orders they get from Western countries, which are mostly about how to benefit Western companies. Troops use the same strategy as Colonel Goida did to kick out the troops. Isn't it colonial that Western countries get to decide whether UN forces should be called from African countries or not? Let us know your thoughts on whether all African countries with UN forces should send all of them back home. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.